Hi everybody, Nem here, and today I will be continuing my review of the Eosheen EX120 brushed hexacopter. I've had some time with it now and I've had some flights with it, and there are a few things that you'll find you want to do some fixing on and things that you have to do just to get it up and running. And in today's installment we'll go over those things, plus a few others. The EX120 comes in this piece of foam packaging and at first in the excitement of opening your new toy and wanting to get into all the goodies you may be tempted to just rip it apart and discard it. And don't do that. This is not your usual cheap styrofoam that flakes all over everything and leaves little white pills on anything it touches. It is some uh, pretty tough EPP type foam that stands up to some wear and uh, it becomes a perfect carrier for the EX120. If you want to put it in a box for carrying or if you want to throw it in a backpack for carrying it around for flying around it's just the perfect insert already made for your EX120. Plus it becomes your carrier for extra batteries and the accessories that go with and as you can see if you turn the hex upside down like this it's easy to get it in and out but it still holds it pretty firmly another thing is that the relatively fragile antenna and camera here um, they stick up and make it really hard to do anything on the bottom of the, the copter and well, even putting a battery in can be a bit of a pain uh, if you don't have a way to lay it level. Turn it upside down like this on top of the box and it becomes your work surface and putting in a battery is just easy. Bam, there it goes. Now, the charger that comes with this is a USB powered charger. And uh, as you can see, it plugs into a USB here. And on the battery, it just plugs into the balance port to charge the battery. This charger takes about, took me about 25 minutes to charge this battery up when it was new out of the box and after a few flights eh, 30 35 minutes after about a three or three and a half minute flight so it's actually pretty effective however one of the things I found out when I first got it is that uh, well they were kinda I don't know somebody wasn't thinking right and they put the sticker so that it blocks the uh, indicator lights so one of the first things you're gonna find if that's the case on yours is that you have to move the label to the other side. It's no big deal. You just take a knife, stick it under there, peel the label up like so. Come on, cooperate a little. And then stick it on the other side. No big deal. Now when you plug it in, Boom, now you can see the indicator lights. And when you plug in a battery, you can see the indicator light. This indicates that it's charging. Flashing green means that it's okay. And then uh, after a while, when the battery is actually fully charged, that light will turn from blinking green to solid green. Like I said, it should be about 30, 35 minutes, uh, for, for me anyways, with about a three minute flight. However, one of the things you want to watch out for, this battery, this is the Charsoon uh, 0.45 450 milliamp 25 seed pack that's uh, sold on Banggood. And it's one of two batteries that are available for this. There's also an orange uh, stick pack 
made by Eashin uh, that is also rated 450 milliamps. Uh, but I think it's 45C. However, one thing I found with this, and this is one thing you want to always check on everyone. The polarity is backwards. Now, that's just this one battery. I found that on this one. I checked it against the pictures on the website and it is in fact just this one pack that is an oddball. It's not a big problem. I mean it's easy enough to fix. You just use a pick or any kind of a metal probe. You depress this little pin here. So you can take the contact out. Now be careful. You may have to bend the pin back up a little bit. No biggie like so. Now make sure you keep whichever one you disconnect set aside so that you can't accidentally short the two because then there will be some sparks and maybe some smoke and you'll be very unhappy and whatnot. Now in order to be correct polarity the red wire which is this one needs to go into the socket mark with a one on it right here. I don't know if you can see that but I'm gonna bring it up so that hopefully you can. There's a one right there. Slip it in, you hear it go snap. Grab the other one. Slip it in, hear it go snap. Now check your polarity before you plug it in. And yes, that is correct. And ta -da, there we go. The EX120 comes with some extras in the package. You get an extra set of props and a little bit of sticky back Velcro and a little Velcro strap for holding down the battery. Now, I tried and tried, and for the life of me, I couldn't get this to pull up tight and actually hold down the battery. I found it completely useless. Um, you just need a D-ring holder, a D-ring battery strap to uh, hold the battery down. <coughs> if you buy this Charsoon battery that's uh, on the Banggood website, it comes with a D-ring strap, this one. Um, it's obviously really big on the quadcopter but hey if it's all you've got use it because you just need the d-ring to be able to pull that battery down tight however i found um just on chance because i happen to have one that the strap for a run cam 2 fits on this perfectly allows you to get the battery right where it needs to be which it's actually pretty far back in order for the copter to level to balance out you actually have to have the back of the battery sticking out a little bit right about flush with the uh, buzzer there but then once you get it tightened down it's just like that it's on there and here you go nicely balanced now, something else I found on this is the way they deliver this stock, um, the transmitter, the, uh, the receiver rather, right here, is usually tucked in underneath this plate. And well, it kind of sticks out a little bit here and gets in the way of the strap. And it keeps the antenna just stuck in this space where it's right in the middle of the antenna, right in the middle of the props. And it's mostly, you know, right in the middle of carbon fiber that blocks radio reception. So I moved it out here to get easier access to the bind button and so that the antenna could stick out. Now I've confirmed that I can connect to my flight controller in bootloader mode. I've reassembled the EX120 and there are a few things I wanted to go over. 
First is the receiver. As I mentioned in my bind video, the FreeSky version, Bind and Fly EX120, uses this tiny RX. This is not a FreeSky product. This is an aftermarket FreeSky compatible receiver based on Medellic's work in the RC groups. It supports CPPM and SBUS. It also produces RSSI feedback as well as two analog channels of telemetry. These are not used on EX120 as it comes, but they are available for you to use as you see fit. Uh, the flight controller, they advertise it as having beta flight. It doesn't. It has clean flight. Uh, that said, I mean, I know clean flight doesn't in exactly excite people nowadays because there are so many other firmwares that everybody wants to talk about, uh, particularly beta flight, which I wanted to try on this. Uh, which is why I'm doing all of this with the bootloader mode. However, the build of clean flight that's on here has a pretty good tune on it, and the hexacopter flies pretty well on it. Plus, it also has a few other nifty features that are pre-programmed and ready to use out of the box. They're actually kind of nice. I'm going to go over those really quick. First, as you can see, the WS2812 uh, light bar is already programmed. Uh, when it first powered up, it did its power on self-test and it lit up white. That tells you that it's in power on self-test mode. Then when it passed that, the LEDs all turned green. So now it's in standby, ready to R mode. And that lovely sound you're hearing right now is the low RSSI beeper, which is pre-programmed as well. As soon as I turn on my radio and it connects, that'll go away. The LEDs are also programmed to let you know when it's armed. And when you decelerate. And when you turn left or right. Yeah, okay. Turn signals and brake lights are silly, but it's cool that it comes that way. I will also be posting in my Getting It Going article on RC Groups a Tyrannus profile that has disarm, arm, and fail safe with beeper on switch SA on the Tyrannus, as well as rate, horizon, and angle modes on switch SB on the Tyrannus. Nothing exciting, nothing special, just enough to get you up and running and flying with the quad as quick as possible. I will also be posting a file on that article that includes a CLI dump that you can use to program the flight controller in command line mode so that uh, it is matched up with the Tyrannus Plus profile that I'll be posting. So that with just a few clicks, you can actually be up and flying on this instead of trying to get in there and figure out why the radio isn't conf the radio order isn't configured right, and trying to f figure out all your uh, other things. This will get you up and flying with uh, three uh, three modes and uh, arm disarm a uh, disarm arm and a failsafe on a switch. Uh, what else? <laughs> okay. I love the look of this little quad. It's it's actually pretty. It's um, it's very low profile looking, and having the camera down here like that is a large part of that. It really helps the look. But that camera angle is just not conducive to fast forward flight, and this is really supposed to be a racing hexacopter. Uh, the problem with that is, well, as you can see, when you try to angle up, you've got props in the way. And so it kind of really isn't a great deal. At the same time, as you can see in here, there's a little connector right there. 
and if you try to angle up on it you're actually sitting on that connector just begging to break it off so my thought is this little bracket this is a bracket for the tiny whoop it is made for this camera and in a later installment I will also be doing a follow-up video and article it's an upgrade video and article which will include the bracket mod and upgrading to Betaflight of course and possibly even will include upgrading to these bad boy batteries to see if the uh, heavier duty connector and wires actually makes any difference in the performance so stay tuned there's more fun stuff with the x120 coming thanks for watching nem out